Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I'm Panos here. I see many people logging in. Welcome, wherever you're coming from. You can uh, just introduce yourself in the chat box here of, uh, of Zoom. Let us know where you're logging in from. We will be starting the webinar uh, in about a minute. Let's give a chance to as many people as possible to, to catch it from the beginning. Hi, Amando. Hi, Kim. Hi, Eden. Bjorn. Alice. Hi, everyone. Very excited to have you all here. Uh, just a couple of uh, housekeeping uh, items. You can just uh, use the chat uh, while we will be talking. Feel free to submit your questions in the in the Q and A section of uh, of Zoom. We 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 have today with us Renata from our customer uh, support team who will be answering any any questions. And also, don't worry about the recording. We will make sure to send you tomorrow a, a full recording of the entire uh, webinar as long as well as the presentation. So you just have to sit back and relax and uh, and uh, be involved in the in the in the webinar. Just a few more seconds to give the chance to as many people as possible to, to start. So I think we can, uh, we can start right away. Uh, for me, just a, a warm welcome to everybody, uh, wherever you're logging in from. I'm Panos. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of LearnWolds. We have an amazing panel here uh, prepared for you uh, for you today. A very brief introduction about LearnWolds. We are uh, LearnWolds is a software platform on a mission to empower and future-proof knowledge-based businesses. We are a white label platform where you can create amazing online courses or package your know your knowledge and share or sell this knowledge to your uh, to your audiences. We provide we are a full all in one platform with all the tools you ever need to create amazing, engaging, interactive online courses. Share them, educate your customers, train your employees. Uh, we can be the uh, the, a super powerful and flexible e-learning solution, the only e-learning solution you will ever need to power your knowledge-based business. And uh, with that very brief uh, intro, I pass the baton over to my colleague, Joe, who will introduce, who will set the, the agenda for today's meeting and introduce the panelists. Hello, everyone. Um, we are happy to have you with, with us today and uh, together with our co-founders and our crew of experts, we are going to uncover for you how you can make assessments, exams, quizzes and self-assessments interesting, authentic and engaging with the use of storytelling. So let's take a look on the agenda for our two days live webinar. Uh, first section, uh, we are going to speak about how storytelling and assessments go hand in hand. Is this something that it's true? Yes, it's a big yes. And we will find out together the why. What are the steps to create an immersive story-based assessments? And last but not least, your questions will be answered live. So I would like to start with a, qu a question. How the power... Sorry, uh, also, uh, as we said, uh, today we are along with our co-founders and uh, uh, George, Pali, you're you, our CPO, and Panos that already introduced uh, to you, our CEO, and Elisa, our e-learning uh, designer here at LearnWatch. So getting uh, to the core of our today's webinar, and uh, as I said before, I would like to start with a question. Uh, how the power of storytelling can empower your academy's exams? How you can create an engaging story while proving that your training works? 
let me get deeper on the core meaning of the story. If we go to the next slide, uh, we are going to see what does a story consist of. The first characteristic, as you can see, it's the narrator. In this case, the narrator is the instructor, the one who will present the story, the one who will transfer the knowledge to their audience inside on this story environment. The second element of its story is the reader. And in this case, the reader is the student. The student is asked to watch the story, get engaged with the story, interact with it, and explain afterwards what he or she understands. The third element is the way in which the plot will be materialized. In this particular case, it's an assessment platform that must support all the elements to create a story-based assessment. We here at LearnWorld strongly believe that a multimodal and narrative nature of learning uh, that uh, will create this immersive story-based assessment type is fully supported within our platform with a variety of features that will support you in order to create based on your needs and based on your own nature of your academy. Therefore, the question we have to answer in our today's webinar is the following. How you could design and develop assessments that are impactful and efficient with the use of storytelling in 2023? Because what you need to do in order to prove that your training works and secure that your learners will uh, digest and will understand and will get the value within your courses is to excite them and to make them feel that they are waiting for the next one, for the next question that they will need more confident about the knowledge that they have gained. And all of that for you without any uh, code, without a line of code, without any software expertise needed. So here in the next slide, you're going to see the 12 step framework that we are going to present today to create story-based assessment. So Pano, if you want, we can start with the first step of the framework. Yes, and this is going to be a, a quite uh, interactive presentation. We, we will split the presentation between me and George and we'll have Elisa showcase in real time how uh, every one of the steps that we're presenting can be actually implemented in real time within the, the Learn Worlds, uh, the Learn Worlds platform. So this, this is not a, a, a theoretic uh, framework. This is something that you can actually implement all of it or any part of it, uh, anything that you that you feel can uh, can can fit. Uh, with uh, what problem you're trying to solve at every at every point and uh, we want to make it as hands-on as possible so this is also why we're open to all your questions and we'll be happy to do uh, uh, an as long as possible q a later after the presentation so what we invite you to to do here as a uh, as a course creator as a course author is to think yourself uh, as a director of a movie to think yourself as the curator of an experience, as a, as a narrator that uh, that uh, presents a story to your to your audience. This is what to, and to your students. This is what an online course uh, is altogether, and this is how we we want you to think in the particular in this particular case of uh, of assessments. So what you're trying to do. Uh, when you are built, when you're directing a movie, one of the first things that you have to think is is the the scenery. What is the what is the background? What is the the environment? The stage where this play will uh, will uh, will happen, and um, it's about choosing the background colors. It's about choosing the the navigation, the simple actionable items that your students will uh, will interact uh, with. Uh, the first uh, thing that we will present is about the different types of navigation. Uh, even though there are many options, you can have like questions uh, one after the other, and you can show a scroll uh, down. Here we'll go for the most simple uh, option, which is a card-based navigation. It's uh, it's a very 
clean, white background where every one of your questions individually will be uh, will be presented. So every time the student will focus on only one question. Nothing else will distract him. And there is nothing else to to you know to absorb his uh, his attention. Uh, one present one question will be presented. Uh, the the student can focus and then uh, the student can answer based on that entirely. And we want to make the the framework and the scenery as minimalistic as possible. So we won't give them lots of navigation options. They they won't have all these buttons that seemingly give them some control. But on the other end, they usually end up overwhelming the user with many, many choices. So we will go with a very simple uh, uh, choice of auto navigation without any interruption, without the user having to do anything more than clicking, uh, than, than uh, pr providing an answer uh, to the to the question. So the entire focus of the of the student who at the when he is. Uh, participating in an assessment is overwhelmed and uh, also can definitely feel some uh, some anxiety about this experience. We try to make it as minimalistic and as simple as possible so they can focus on what is important at that moment and it's to present their understanding and their knowledge. So Elisa, can you show us how this can happen within the LearnWorlds environment? Yes, absolutely. Hello from me as well. And uh, allow me to switch my screen. And this time, I'm going to take you over to an admin dashboard of Learners School, so we can see how we can add that. So, as soon as you've created your school, just head over to the Contents tab, and uh, let's go ahead and create an assessment, and then go through those options for uh, the one card view, for the simplified background, and all of that. So, click on Add Activity, and I'm going to get, go straight over here and go for a simple exam. Give your exam a name let's say um, my first exam or whatever your course is about right here and click on enter. Now we'll uh, open up the exam builder, the assessment builder right here. And this is what it looks like. So before we start adding in the questions and fill us in with information that we, let's go over some settings on the uh, design part. So from here, you get to uh, select the navigation like Panos mentioned. So obviously we want to offer our story in chunks. So what a better way to do that via card-based option. You'll see that they can also automatically navigate. Um, so you can uh, choose that from here and here as well. Uh, then besides that, you also get to decide on uh, the view on the um, the theme, uh, like we said, we want that to be uh, simple, so select a minimal style just so that there aren't any other distractions for the user. I feel like the one I have on right now is great. So that's how you create the assessment. You get to decide on the navigation card base and set it to automatically navigate them uh, to the next question as soon as the answer one right away. Um, let's head over to the next uh, slide for now. And then as we go, I'm going to show you more things that we're going to be adding onto the exam part. So hi also let's from there, there. And, let's, and let's go to the second step. So we have enabled auto navigation. We have enabled, uh, um, uh, we, we have designed a simple environment. We have uh, the, the, the scenery to start the dialogue. We have the, 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 the scenery to start talking about uh, what we, we want to say and, and we want to present we want to present the assessment as a story so technically you need two things the first thing is you need story blocks you need elements that include text video widgets in general so as to present your story so while usually uh, uh, assessment tools do not give the opportunity to add uh, blocks other than questions here in learn Wolves, we focused on that and we have separate blocks that Elisa will show you, a separate uh, uh, blocks where you can add uh, video, you can add text, and you can start presenting your narration. Uh, the, the second thing that you need is to, 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 to decide about the content. What are you going to present? And, you know, usually, in most cases, we are starting with, with, with the first question. We are not even introducing ourselves. We are not... We are not uh, respecting this dialogue that starts to be uh, to, that starts to, to 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 build between us and the learner because you know the learners are coming into this question by having the intention to discuss with us. They accept they they, are, they, they expect 
that they will have they, that they will have a discussion with us because we are going to ask them things and they have to answer back. So how should we introduce ourselves? How should they, we introduce the assessment? We need to use blocks, and we have it's not a bad idea to pay a compliment for the fact that they are studying and they are trying to mention a shared experience so was to relate with uh, your students and to understand you are uh, uh, the, in the same team or to show genuine interest on what they are going to achieve or what uh, you are going to present uh, uh, in the next slide. So let's see how we can create blocks and present information and, uh, and see uh, an example. Yeah, so what George said just now uh, is great in theory, so let's now see it in action. So I'm back into the uh, assessment builder over here. And um, the way that we can do that and uh, just add more into the storytelling part, introduce ourselves and do all of that is with the start screen. So you'll see that by default, your exams, your assessments will have a start screen like this one, which is customizable. So this is a great opportunity for you to perhaps add in a video instead of just a simple text, right? So you can add in widgets, just click onto this plus icon. And uh, there's quite a few options over here, but let's go for a video screen right here. And perhaps you may have recorded a short video introducing yourself or just letting them know what's going to happen into the next slides or the next uh, assessment and so on. So right here, click onto this little section that we added for the uh, video and click onto the video part and then just browse through your uh, videos. So mine is located right here. So let me just uh, find that out for you. It's this one and click over here. Now, if you select the video itself, there's a few options for you right here. You can have your video autoplay. So as soon as they uh, start the assessment, this is gonna start playing for them as well. Um, anything that you don't wanna show over here, for instance, any little questions, you'll see that there's a little text box. Feel free to just delete these and you know have the screen nice and ready for the next part. So this right here is the, um, the, uh, the start screen. You can change all of these options over here or just completely delete them. If you don't want to add any uh, text over here, let me delete that as well, just so you have the video itself. So uh, we'll see that in a little bit in the preview. You'll see that I'm just kind of like introducing them into the assessment over here. Now, uh, another way for you to add some type of interactivity and just personalize it even more by showing yourself is uh, with blocks. So instead of just going and straight ahead adding the question, you can even add blogs in between the sections, in between the, uh, the questions that you'll be adding. So uh, to do that, click right here, and you can add a content block. So uh, go for one. Uh, let's go for one with a video over here. Mm, I don't really like this one. Let me switch this to another video. Uh, so click on here again and add a little video this time. Same process as we saw earlier. Click on the element itself, and let's select a video. Browse through to find your videos at the far top. You'll see all the courses you have in the school, uh, that the ones that contain videos. So here's the one I've recorded for this specific blog. And right here, you get a chance to uh, talk about the what's coming up next. So the first one was the, the starting screen where you could say something general, just welcome them into the assessment. Right here, you have the opportunity to just uh, further go into what's coming up next. So what is the first question gonna be like? Uh, right, so this is uh, what I'm going to be uh, talking about over here. So again, feel free to customize this. Anything you don't want to add, you don't want to have over there, uh, feel free to just delete or um, change those. Now over here, I do want to add a button as well, just so that they're redirected over to the next question. So again, I'm following through the same process. Just go ahead and add a button, for instance, a continue button. Uh, these also are customizable, so click right here. Uh, you can change it. Uh, I want to keep it very minimal, so I'm going to add the black and white one. Uh, you can change the alignment over here as well. Just keep this in the center. And of course, you can select where the button is going to take the user, so it could be the next question, right? So here is the block screen. And now let's go ahead and check out how we can add questions, right? Uh, so to do that, it's very easy. You could either go right here and click on Add or Import Question. Or you could even go over here into this plus icon and select the question type. So let's say that uh, we want to add a true or false type of question. 
So go right here. And uh, this scenario right here, and this is a course about how you can create an online course in five very easy steps, right? So let's say that into this step, we want them to actually uh, select and associate an image to that course card. So that's what this question is about. And again, over here, instead of just typing in the question into a text format, that is also a great opportunity for you to maybe add some multimedia and further enrich it. And once more over here, I prepared a, a little video for that as well. So same process as earlier. I'm just uh, browsing through to find my video. Here's the one that I have for the first question. And we're going to see that in the previous Elisa, class. So Elisa, do not forget to uh, switch on the autoplay video and the, the auto navigate, which I think isn't enabled. Oh, yes, sure. I'll check that out as well. So the autoplay for the video is enabled right here. The auto navigate I have on from here as well, but let me double check that. Here. Uh, were you referring to this in case I'm missing something? So I'm just taking the change. So let's here. go to point. I, I think we are we are ready to go to point three and then see your yep. Sure. I, I think what uh, Elisa presented, it, it already opens up your appetite to do more. You have already set the scenery. You have an amazing intro where you connect with your students and you you express, uh, you you welcome them to this little experience of a, of an assessment. And then you start adding questions and what? You will stop at text. This is the only uh, assessment that, uh, that uh, you can uh, think of. It used to be a major limitations and it still is in many cases in most uh, uh, learning management systems and, uh, and assessment builders. Uh, but you've seen uh, in, uh, in Lisa's presentations how any widget can be added within any kind of, uh, of assessment. So now you have to think creatively you have started building a connection with your students and you are holding them by the hand as they complete their assessment. You don't, you're not limited to text, whether you're doing a multiple choice question and true false question, you can enrich me and enrich it. You can have live questions that are imitating a, a, a nice little discussion between you and your, and, and your students. So why just copy paste uh, some text and create a boring question? and not upload a, a little video of yourself, a 30 second video very easily, uh, like Elisa showed, where you will be personally asking that question. And this is where your students feel that connection. They feel that engagement. This doesn't feel any more like a, a, a pre-made, copy-pasted, uh, you know, half-baked uh, experience. This is something where you, as, a, as, a, as an author, you put in your personal attention, you care about your students, you ask a question, you really care about their answer, and you will be there to receive their, uh, their response uh, uh, as well. So this is where the, ex the experience is narrated, it's curated, and it's also a premium experience anymore that's not uh, uh, limited to some, uh, uh, some simple true-false uh, questions and some radio buttons that, is, that the student needs to, to answer. Yeah, so let me show you a few more things. If Panos, Panos, uh, if you're done, I can uh, show yep, them some yep, more on this please. step too. Uh, all right, so here we were uh, in, in the midst of adding one a question. So here is the true or false type of question. You can combine both images right here and videos, whatever multimedia you'd like for the uh, for the question type. So again, right here, let's. Uh, this is a true or false type of question. Let's ask them. Um, whether or not they should uh, associate perhaps an image to their course card. Again, the, the question could be asked either whether or either from the text right here or from the video that you'll add over here or whatever way you choose. So let me just add that right there uh, to my course card. And you get to decide whether that is a true or false question. Uh, yeah, this is a true question right here. So you can click over there to set that up. Uh, let me also add another question. So again, same way, you could either go over here or down to the bottom. And this time, let's go ahead and add a multiple choice question instead. So uh, go over here with the text option. And uh, this time, uh, my question is going to be about let's say the course type. So uh, over here as well, I have tried to make this again as interactive as possible. So I've created yet another video for this. I'm gonna add another video widget over here. 
Again, this will give them a sense that you actually did put in the work to create this. It wasn't just something you, you created real quick. So uh, it gives an overall good image for you to, to add the videos over there. So uh, let me find that video as well. And uh, this is a question too. So I think it's this one. All right, let me delete this part of, at the top. I don't need it because I'm actually describing uh, right here what I uh, need. So right here, we are asking them about the question type, the um, the course type. So what course type should uh, uh, and is supported into a LearnWorlds uh, school? So over here, you go into the options. You see you have various options. Just click on the text itself and you can customize this. So we got paid courses. Uh, we also have free courses, free of charge courses. Uh, we have... Um, coming soon courses, private courses as well, right, uh, private. And obviously all of these are correct. So you can even add another option and just say that, you know, all the above are correct. And just make that the correct answer. Since this is a multiple choice question, just click right here. Now, if you select on this part, you'll notice that you can decide on the scoring, but we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, right, so I think um, let's I think I'm now gonna switch my screen it, back. It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good time to let's say have a preview of what we have created. So let's let's fill the yeah, intro, sure. the video intro. Let's see the question and how this narration starts to reveal itself. Yes, so let's go over at the beginning right here and click on the preview. Hello and welcome to your first assessment on this course. Included you'll find three very easy uh, questions to go through, so buckle up, stay focused and let's start. All right, so you can click on ready to start over here and that's going to go and that's going to take you straight over to the next step. Right here, this should have uh, started automatically, perhaps I forgot. Okay, so I hope you're comfortable, you got your tea or your coffee because we're ready to start and time is going to start ticking. So uh, we're going to go through a series of questions and the first one is selecting uh, the image to assign for your course. Right, so that was the block that we added where you can add a little bit more information on the question that's coming up right next, right after that. In today's world, images speak volume, so it is very crucial what image you're going to assign to your course. I'm not going to play the whole topic. thing, but you get so, the, the point over here. You can add a little a message just to ask the question instead of just type it in. So let's answer that. Uh, we're asking whether or not we should add an image to the course card. Yes, let's go for true. And as you can see, it automatically takes me to the next question, as it should. And again, here we added another uh, video at the top. Uh, where we get to select uh, the, the option over here as well. So uh, let me go for this. This was the correct answer. And right now it's going to ask me to submit or not. Yes, we are ready. So this is the end screen that we're seeing, and we're going to go through this later on uh, in more detail. Uh, George, sure. let me take yeah, this So back I, I, I think the next step is to, to you know, when we, you, you are start uh, creating these uh, kind of uh, of uh, questions, uh, uh, you, you, you shouldn't repeat yourself. So we already have created a very interesting pattern with this video, with this self-navigation, auto-navigation thing, but we still have to make the story interesting. So we need more type of questions, we need more type of interactions, so as to make your learners uh, stay focused and also um, see every new step as something unexpected. They, they have to feel that they, they, you, you are pushing them, you are, you are making them think, they, you, you are trying to engage them. So for the fourth step, what we are saying is tell a surprising story. So use different types of question and which is the best type of question here it's to ask them to video record themselves and answer and uh, an answer a question or you can you, you can ask them to uh, upload an assignment or you can ask them to um, uh, record an, an audio so the dialogue starts to be interactive so we have a lisa presenting and uh, describing the questions, but we are also stopping the narration and ask the student to upload now your video and talk. Yes, so uh, let's see how we can do that. 
let me go back over here and uh, let's try to add another question. So again, the same process, click on the, click on the plus icon over there. And if you scroll all the way down, Right here, you'll find these two options where you can ask your users to record a video or an audio. So let's go for the video. Um, over here, again, I have prepared a little short video for uh, for them, for the questions. So let me add that as well. So pretty much the same process as earlier. So let me browse and find my, uh, my video over there. And it's this one here. This part we're not going to need, so I'm deleting the uh, the text of the part at the beginning. So uh, basically, what I'm uh, saying over here is that I am uh, asking them to elaborate a bit more and give their thoughts on how and what are some best practices on selecting a name for your course. So again, my question is in the form of a, a video, and right here is where I'm going to ask them to upload their own video. So if you click right here, you also get to make this a required field. You can hide it too if you want to, and then select the length of the video that the users can submit. So that is from 10, 20 to 40 seconds. Uh, let's set this to, I don't know, perhaps 20. And you can even uh, allow them to offer some additional uh, feedback or some notes before or when they're submitting their video. So um, let's save this up. And uh, let's preview that right now, right, George? And see uh, how we, that layout yes, let, looks. Yes, let's see. Let's see how it, it looked like, and let's record the video so was to build yeah. this. Let me just browse through the rest Hello, of the options to your... we saw them earlier. Just uh, in today's world, going over the next ones. All right, so here is the one that we just created. Again, here is a video with me just asking them. You have it's essentially asking them the to third. submit their own video and what they have to say. So the way for you to do it is just by clicking over here onto your camera. That's going to allow you. That's going to uh, ask you to give permission to your uh, to the platform to use a camera. So right here, the user's camera is going to pop up. Uh, click on this button right here. The user is going to start talking. They're going to give their feedback, and as soon as they're ready, click onto the pause button. Then click onto the check mark right here. The video is over here, and once they're ready, they can even add in just um, additional notes since we enabled that field, and click on upload to uh, just get the video uploaded. So you see just how easy this is, right? The, not only do the users see uh, just uh, an actual footage of you asking the questions, they have the ability to give the feedback right away from you, whether that be a video or an audio. Obviously, according to uh, how long the video is, is the time of it to be completed. And as soon as it's done, again, just click on submit. And there you go. So let me take it back over here. So now we have uh, uh, Elisa presenting. We have the student presenting uh, and uh, answering uh, through video. So we are going into the feedback, feedback strategy. And usually, you know, feedback is something very straightforward in most assessment systems. So you can just... Uh, uh, set up some automatic feedback and that's it and this is going to appear this is not the case here in language because we are seeing we are seeing and we are uh, trying to to um, uh, let's say conceptualize feedback in a more complex way first of all feedback starts with the result screen the ending screen so when you are when you are landing in the end screen after the, the after submission screen you know it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a new world so it's it's the end of the story. It's 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 a, a, a significant point where you have to persuade them about what they achieved. It's a, a moment that you can encourage them to do more things and so on. So in Learnables, the ending screen is a total a totally editable screen. So you can write whatever you want there. You can open or close a, a show or not uh, do not show several things. You can customize it as you want. So the first thing is you have to, in order for the story to evolve nicely and end nicely, you have to have control over the ending screen. The second thing that you have to do is to decide how much feedback you, you, you are willing to, to give. Usually feedback is only automatic, as we've said, for closed type questions. But here in, in, in Lenwals, we enable instructors to give feedback, manual feedback to everything. So even if you create a closed type questionnaire, you can enable a setting and you can uh, uh, set up automatic feedback. And on top of that, you can give manual feedback to the, to, uh, to the users. So let's see how, how we can do all of that. 
Right, so again, I'm switching my screen over here. So that is a great um, time as well because we already have the ending screen open. So here's what it looks like right now. You can download a feedback uh, report over here as well. Now let's see how we can customize this screen, right? So let me switch back to the authoring mode. And from here, if you go over to your settings, we have the ending screen right here. So click over here. And over here into the ending screen, you get to decide exactly what to show or not to show. It's easy as that in, in to, with a click of a button. So from here, you get to show the results analysis widget uh, or uh, the ending screen icons, the ending screen, the titles, the scores, the points. Uh, you can even show correct answers if you want to or just uh, offer feedback for the ones that weren't correct. You can show the time span, the data submitted, the attempts. Uh, and you can also um, show it when it's pending manual uh, grading as well. So for instance, for the video that they submitted, right? The, the grading over there is manual. So this is where you decide all of that from. Um, I don't know and if course, you want me to show this too, George? Yeah, of course, you, we can show it that the, the manual feedback is just a setting which says that whenever a questionnaire is submitted, independently of whether it contains open-ended question or closed type questions, it will go through the review center. So even if you have 10 multiple choice questions and you select this option, you will be able, although everything will be, will be done automatically, you will have the last, the last say before the student will see the results. So you can add there your feedback, even based on what, which are the, the, the existing score or whatever. The yes. second thing I think we need to show here is that the end screen is a, a, a typical screen where you can add widgets and you can add everything. So it's fully customizable and you can bring it to your thinking and to your uh, expectations. Yes. Uh, would you like me to, oh, sorry, let me close this. I off. think we can continue because time uh, goes. Uh, back. To, yes. yes. Uh, uh, so I think you, you, you see where this is going. We have started from a, a simple unidirectional assessment, and we have created a dialogue. Uh, so we are we have asked our question, uh, the student has provided their answer, in some cases uh, using video, and now feedback is probably the most important part of an assessment where, and it's tremendously important for, for, the, for, the, for the learning process, it's, it's tremendously important for students to understand how they, uh, uh, how they they behaved, how they progressed, what is the, their answer, and this is where feedback can be perso personalized by you, and this ca it can also come in the form of uh, of video. And I, I've seen already some great comments in how you are thinking about new ways of employing these kinds of uh, of uh, functionality in your own cases, and how some um, amazing assessment scenarios can be created. This can be. And we're talking about many different types of content of or, 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 or courses that you could you could be using. Imagine how important it is to give your personalized feedback in a pronunciation lesson where somebody is learning a foreign language, or in a, in a singing lesson or orthophony, how people can can speak correctly. Imagine that the the student themselves they're not just recording themselves answering again, giving a, a, an, oral, a, an oral answer, but they could also be recording, we, even with their mobile devices, they could be recording how they use a, a certain material or a certain, a certain device. This can be used in school. This can be any, any simple or any complex, uh, uh, complex uh, argument. So you're not just assessing the, 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 the actual content, like a, a, a few sentences of an answer. Now you can answer both the question, how the question has been presented, all the soft skills that uh, are part of, uh, of being able to present, uh, to present an answer and make, uh, and make an argument. And this is also something that is very, it, it creates a level playing field. It, it is multimodal. Not everybody is uh, perfect with uh, uh, with text and providing and, and using written speech. In, some people actually do prefer, or in in some cases, they have only the choice of of giving oral oral responses. So all these are there, and more so, 
everybody is committed. It's not anymore an impersonal uh, uh, answer. This is not just a, you know a, an automated uh, online course anymore. This is a this is a, a discussion. This is uh, something that happens uh, with with your involvement, with your presence. So you feel to be next to your students, and also video can be very fast. So imagine instead of uh, typing and writing and, and getting all these comments, you can just sit in front of your of your device and very, very quickly, like uh, as an experienced teacher, if you know the answers, you can just go in and provide personalized feedback to all the answers that you have uh, presented. This is an option. You will be able to choose uh, what is the level of, uh, of assessment and involvement that is needed in, in, uh, in every case. But you can imagine that the, the possibilities here are, are endless. Okay, so um, let's show, let's see how we can provide that personalized feedback that Panos mentioned. So again, allow me to switch my screen back over here. And this time, what we're talking about is essentially the review center. So to locate the review center, you need to go over to your admin dashboard, and then you'll find it under the report center, and click on review center. Apologies if my system is a tad slower, it's just due to the webinar that's at the same time. All right, so I'm over here at the review center, and as you can see, I have two responses from users, right? So if I want to provide a feedback, I simply need to go over here where it says review assessment. So from here, you will see all the answers that the students, that the learners gave to all of your questions. You can see their answers. Uh, you can give feedback from here. You can give a uh, written feedback, or if you want to, you can give an overall uh, feedback that you can record straight off of your camera. So, so as you can see right here, you can deliver your questions via video. You can allow your students to record a video straight off of their webcam or an audio. And right now you also have the ability for the admins or the instructors to provide immediate feedback and personalized feedback with video as well, not only via texting. So this is what you can do over here. Um, I don't know if um, I should show it or not, but again- Let's click just the record, the record button. And I think we have to go on because we don't have a lot of time. So yeah, yeah. So record there. Yes. Yes. Click on the record and you can select whether you want to record an audio or a video as earlier. So again, just click right here and uh, let me open up my camera. So it's the same process that we saw earlier. So you let's say I'm the instructor right here. I just give my feedback according to the questions and that's it. I just from here and then I can upload it. So same process as earlier over here as well. And I'm going to pass the screen back. Okay. Let's go over okay. to the okay. next Thanks. tab. Thanks, Elisa. Another thing that we we are obliged to think about after seeing all these options is uh, adding variability in our assessments. Uh, one of the most uh, frequent uh, mistakes we see, and frankly, this is something that we've done ourselves in the, in the past, is being monotonous and doing same thing after after same thing. This is, you know, a standard, let's say, template of a course is show a video and then show a 10 question multiple choice and that's it. And then the same, the same and the same again. Here, what you can do as you narrate this experience, as you narrate this dialogue between you and your students and the corpus of knowledge that they're trying to uh, to learn is also give them this variability and use all these different tools by creating different and interesting and engaging assessments so that everybody, when they go to the next assessment, they will see new things. They will have a new experience. And believe me, this is very, very important for them to still keep being engaged and keep uh, being satisfied. Uh, for example, you can start your a course. There's nothing to assess in the beginning, or is it? Like, uh, would you like to know what is the state of the knowledge of the students before they even start engaging with your content? And as you progress and as you uh, uh, as you present some some of the knowledge, it is extremely important to give to provide also the opportunity for students to self-assess, to be able to measure where they are themselves, how how good they are they are. Uh, in uh, in absorbing the knowledge that you are uh, that you are sharing. So at that point, the assessment is not something threatening; is a tool that you use to assess where they are and how you can help them. Because at that point, you are still there to to help them. So imagine you can present your knowledge. You can in, in, uh, intertwine this. You can mix this up with uh, self assessments, uh, uh, easy tests that people complete themselves with that come along with feedback where you explain what went wrong and where they should improve um, 
Uh, and this is, again, you can choose how much uh, involvement you would like to be there. And then you can increasingly add more interactivity and progress to the final, let's say, exams. Then uh, the, the, the exams themselves can still be, uh, can, you can have the, the, the final formal exams for everything. But again, there still, you, you can use, and this will improve your assessment by a lot, you can use all these different, um, uh, different uh, uh, possibilities. So create engaging, unexpected, interesting uh, events and occurrences for your students and use the power of the feedback to keep them engaged and, and keep them involved in this uh, in this process. Yes, so like Pano said, uh, this is a great way for you to start a dialogue and create a culture of evaluation, but how can we do that? So in the beginning, I started off and I actually added a, an exam straight away just so that I could show you the layout and how that looks like. So let me go back into that course and let's see what other options we have for tools to evaluate. So. Uh, let's give this a second to load. Uh, going back over to the contents tab as soon as it's done and click on add activity. So let's take a minute over here and go over the exams options. So first off, we started and we added a blank exam and then you saw that we created the screens and the, then we added the questions. This right here is a hybrid activity. You can add again, both open-ended, closed-ended questions that includes multiple choice questions with multiple right answers. You can have short type of questions, uh, matching, reordering, uh, open assignments, and uh, you can start blankly. Uh, you can use quorums as well, gradient quorums, or even use uh, the ready-made templates that we have for you over here. Um, then besides exams, we also have the self-assessment tool. So right here, grading isn't really important. Uh, right here, we turn the focus more onto the information that, have, that is being submitted. So right here, users have the ability to write a review or write down their thoughts or just offer some feedback. They can upload work, as you can see. So again, you can either start blankly or even add templates for these as well. Uh, this too is a hybrid activity. So again, it can con combine both closed-ended and open-ended questions as well. Let me uh, turn my screen back to my colleagues and we'll see another example of that in a little bit. So, you know, we have here for the step eight, a, 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 a tagline, let's say, no self-reflection, no learning. You know, we are talking about stories and stories are about uh, provoking thoughts, about uh, triggering uh, metacognitive processes. It's about thinking uh, of yourself as a protagonist, uh, about emp empathy and, and so on. You know, there are several moments throughout the course when you need your learners to test their power, to test their understanding, to test their critical thinking. It is a kind of a silence in the course story because you are asking them to distance themselves from what is being said and you are... It, it, it's not about interacting with the teacher, it, but it's about interacting with themselves. This is why you have to enable your learners to reflect on their goals, on their understanding, on their outcomes, of, on, on, on their learning journey. So you need to give them the opportunity to test their knowledge in typical exams without score, to upload their view, as Elisa said, or their video, again, without scoring, or write down their self critique or their learning diary, only for themselves. Yeah, so shall we see how we can add one of these? Uh, so let me switch my screen back. So like George said, quite a few options, right? They could write down their views, their goals, upload their work as we saw earlier, or just straight off record their short video or an audio. They can keep a simple diary. So just, just a simple diary so that they can write down their thoughts or even have a reflection journal where they can reflect upon all their feedback that they gave. Um, so these are some ready-made templates. So again, you can either start blankly or go for one of these. Uh, just for the sake of time, I think I'm just going to go for a, um, a template over there. Just naming this my diary or whatever name you want to give it. Click on enter. And again, that is going to open up the assessment builder over here. Uh, it's quite the same pattern. You'll see again the start screen. You can change that and customize that. And right here, since this is a template, this includes this uh, lovely section over here where your users can write down their thoughts, opinion, ideas, and so on, and just keep it right here. Uh, obviously, you can add more questions here as well. So just click over here. You can add all the exam type of questions that we saw earlier and even form type of questions too uh, from here. Uh, 
So very easily done, very easily created uh, according to what type of question you want to add and what type of feedback and uh, reviews you want your users to, to submit over there. The, the next point has to do with measuring the results of the assessment with, uh, with accuracy. And this is something where in the past, I have to say we were a bit more black and white. So, you know, uh, right or wrong, and, and this is it. Uh, but this was one of the most uh, requested features when it came to, to, to our assessment uh, option at the very, very beginning. So now this is very much uh, advanced and it gives you the opportunity to, to really set up advanced uh, scoring uh, scenarios where it's not just, you know, black or white, but you are able to uh, find all the different shades in between in an answer that you are getting depending on the, on the scenario, obviously. So here you can add uh, weights to any one of the answers um, and it's even negative scoring when it comes to an answer. So you can fine tune and you can have a, a very, uh, you can have lots of flexibility in how you, you assess uh, the, the, the exams and how you assign, let's say, a numerical value to uh, what somebody knows. It, it's very, very difficult to, to make this, uh, in some cases, to make this mapping between what a person knows and what a complex interactive engaging assessment can tell you uh, how that can be this mapped to a, to a simple uh, number. So we give you a, a very sophisticated uh, mechanism to, uh, for you to be able to fine tune your, your scoring. Yes. So in other words, not all questions and not all answers have the same significance, right? So you may want to weigh an answer a bit more than the other one. So uh, let me again switch back my screen and uh, let me go back over to one of to the one that we created earlier, just so I have a few ready-made questions and we'll go through the, um, the scoring part. So let me click on uh, add questions right here. Pick or select the question that uh, you want to change the um, the weights for, the scoring for. And let's say I'm over here. Now, if you select onto the little star part, you go over here and you're under the score part. So from here, you got the score method where you have the basic one and you get to decide how many points to give on the correct answers and how many points to give for the incorrect answers, right? So you could go from one to two and that could even go to a negative as well if you do that. Now, besides the basic one, you can even have the advanced answers where you can give different weights per, per answer as you can see over here. So uh, how many points will th this answer have? How many points will that answer have? And so on. So this is exactly what this option right here is for. And then besides that, you also have more options onto the grading and attempts over here as well. Uh, I don't know if uh, you'd like me to go over this. No, no, let's, let's go on, time? I think. Okay. So, yes. so we do have, uh, you know, uh, we have committed, we have created the, our assessment. Uh, but, you know, we, we are expecting tens or hundreds or, or thousands of learning ta taking your exams. And uh, we are talking about a huge time investment from a lot of people. And uh, what's the worst thing to happen? To fail them. Internet connection is lot, lost or the browser crashed or uh, uh, the, the right answers can be revealed uh, from the code or the time starts again. And at the end, you repeat your answer from the beginning. Especially when you are when you are building a narrative experience, the worst thing to happen is to make your learners revisit the same narrative again. That will make it a huge failure. Everything suddenly will become unauthentic, slow, and expected. That's why here in LearnWalls, we, we are trying to take care of these issues with server-side time measurement and with auto-recovery for less frustrations. So with auto-recovery, students may navigate away and come back to the assessment within a specific time frame, as Elisa will show you, without losing their answers. And this is very important when we are building story-based assessments. Yes. Don't you just hate it when that happens? Like for me, if something crashes and I have to go through that again, Chances are that I won't. I'll probably just abandon whatever I was doing. So how can we prevent that from happening? So here at LearnWorlds, we've uh, actually named that the auto recovery. So you'll find that 
uh, sorry, let me fix that over here. So you'll find that uh, over here into your settings and go under the auto recovery. So from here, you get to decide um, for how long can users be away from your questionnaire for the system to store their answers so far. So this is exactly what you decide over here. That is in a matter of days, hours, or minutes. And you can simply just determine it from here. As you can see by default right here, it's uh, under 30 minutes. So that means that if for some reason something happens and they exit, the system will keep their answers so far for, for X amount of time, right? Whatever you add over here. So I suggest keeping this on, adding a value over here so that they're covered just in case. Let me turn it back over here. And uh, the, the next uh, step in our narration building uh, approach is the possibility of hyper-personalizing the, the rest of the experience post the submission of the, of the assessment. Here we give you the, the possibility to add tags to individual students based on individual answers that they have uh, given you over this, uh, this assessment. And based on these tags, you can show them different things, you can filter them, you can segment them. So here you have to think both as a, as a very experienced uh, teacher, but also as a marketer, because you, you will have the, the possibility of creating, based on, on this deep uh, and authentic experience that can last from five minutes all the way to 30 minutes if it's a big assessment where you have started discovering so many things about what the other person knows or is uh, or is able to, to answer. And now you can create little buckets and uh, and be able to segment people based on this uh, on this assessment performance on what they, they gave you. And based on that, you can show them different experiences, whether it's showing a message somewhere or being able to, to filter based on some tag and send a specific email, a specific, a, specific, a specific answer. You can start a sequence. So both as a teacher, you can micro customize an experience and, and provide a unique path for that student. But as a marketer, you have opportunities to provide more information, to provide more options, to pro provide uh, even other other types of content or cases or interactions that you would like your students to achieve. Yes. Yeah, so basically, how can we tag users based on their answers? And then how can we use those tags? Uh, so let me close this off over here. And let's say that we have this uh, answer right here. Uh, I think I need to go over here. So from here, you'll notice that there is another tab right here where it says tags. So from here, you you can give tags according to their responses. So uh, if they um, they selected this option or that option, you get to assign a tag to the user according to the option. So just type in your tag over here. It could be whatever, uh, I don't know, perhaps group one or whatever your tag tag you want to give them, you can add it right there. And that means that if a user goes through this question and they give that answer, they're going to get this tag. Now, what can you do with a tag, right? So first off, you can filter your users by tags, and then maybe you want to follow up with an email sequence like Pano said. Or uh, here at Learner World Study, we even have customized visibility options for the sections on your pages. So I don't know, perhaps let's say that someone said they're interested for a specific course, right? Perhaps you want to show an offer um, that will have a discount to that course. And you only want to target users that gave you that specific answer, right? So that's just one of one or two of the ways that you can use tags. Uh, so yeah, you can tag based on the, on the answer that they gave you uh, from the questions over here. So very easily from the last tab uh, here. So Switching this back to the presentation. The, the last step, the last step, the ending. Uh, so usually we all uh, we all love happy endings because uh, it gives uh, it gives us uh, um, some kind of satisfaction and hope. In general, uh, satisfaction is very precious as it uh, helps us uh, keep going and uh, you know hanging when there are situations when we have difficulties. For example, in understanding when the subject matter is complex and a lot of effort is needed. So certificates are usually the last part of the core story. And um, they are kind of a challenging ending. And usually course creators try uh, to create the preconditions for a happy ending, meaning that they are creating easy certifications 
uh, they are trying to help users get the certificates. So what does that say for us and how should we create the certificates? Uh, certifications are the last thing. So give them the praise they deserve. Of course, they should be serious, they should be professional, but they also should underline the effort of the student to reach that point and also signify the moment of completion. All of that could be injected into the intro video, for example. Great work, you are now ready to complete this course and accompany your experience, for example, with an accreditation. Or you can inject it in your certification feedback. Amazing work, your course is now completed, you earn the certification, you're ready to go, and so on. So we still have to, to, you know, to, to, to think about the certification as part of the story. And all of that, it, it, it is the end of the story. So it's very important to take care of that. So here in LearnWalls, our conceptualization of learning, in our conceptualization of learning, we are saying that assessment is a story, or at least you can see it as a story. The course is a story. A learning path is a story. And narrative theory can inspire us to create uh, you know, learning experiences, innovate in, in, in the way we present and interact with our learners. And in LearnWorlds, we believe that it is the platform for creative narrative learning experiences. Uh, as a product team, uh, we always have that in mind. And we are trying um, to, to, to think about the plot, about the protagonist, and especially about the experience flow. This That's is true. A, uh, George, I don't know if we have time you want to show it. Or I, 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 I think we don't have time. Uh, probably okay. we have to go on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Joe, do we have time for a couple of uh, Q&A questions? I, I've seen that the chat is super busy. Renata is doing her, uh, her amazing work in answering as many questions as possible. Some of them... Some of these questions are pretty deep, and in in some cases we have you know to to check it ourselves. Some great ideas uh, mixed with uh, with questions, but we'll make sure to come back to to all of you. Also, don't forget that you will get full access to this uh, to this recording. And as always, every webinar with you is an amazing an amazing opportunity for us to think about to, to get new ideas and think about new ways of uh, uh, exploring what the platform is capable of and uh, adding even more functionality based on your needs. Indeed, as Pam said, we are going to get back to each one of you if we didn't have the time during our webinar. Um, thank you for your amazing uh, questions and feedback. Uh, really, some new use cases uh, arrived uh, and came up today through your questions, and we're going to uh, take those all into consideration. Every time we improve our platform, our statement is learn was getting better every single day because we are proving this every month with constant updates. Tomorrow you are going to receiving for us the recording along with the presentation, but uh, be ready because uh, we are going uh, to release our first product mounting newsletter. You're going to find out more information about our latest month updates and what is coming next in 2023 from LearnWorld. So uh, thank you very much for being here with us today. And we're looking forward to see you in our upcoming webinars in next year. So I would like to wish you all you happy holidays uh, and uh, a happy new year. Uh, so our best wishes from the Learners team and all of us. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for being here Bye with everyone. us. Have a nice day. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot.